Today we are going to play Michigan Madness. This game provides a fun way to learn about and become more familiar with conditional statements. The goals of this game include using conditional statements to determine facts that will help you figure out what cards each player does or doesn't have. On your turn, win the game by being able to correctly state the cards each player has. To play this game, you will need to cut out and shuffle the Michigan Madness cards by category, give each player a Michigan Madness checklist, nickel, penny, a pencil, and optionally extra paper. Each player is given three Michigan Madness cards, one of each color. If there are any extra cards, place them face up on the table so players can check them off their checklist. For the sake of understanding the rules, we will also have the players lay their cards face up in front of them, although during actual gameplay, cards would be hidden. The youngest player goes first and begins with a statement. If I am Robin Williams, then my favorite place is Detroit, and my favorite state symbol is apple blossoms. A good way to determine if a statement is true or false is the following. A statement is false if saying it makes me tell a lie. A statement is true if saying it does not make me a liar. Keep in mind, claiming a statement is true does not mean that I am telling the truth. If you are Robin Williams, your favorite place is Detroit, and your favorite state symbol is the brook trout, you would signify true by showing a nickel. If you are not Robin Williams, because you are not telling a lie, the statement is automatically true. So you would also show the nickel. If you are Robin Williams, and only one or none of the other statements are true, the statement is false for you. Show the penny to signify false. Players then mark off what new information they have on their checklists. The player to the left goes next, producing another conditional statement. If I am Stevie Wonder, then my favorite place is Lansing, or my favorite state symbol is an apple blossom. There are several ways this statement can be true. First, if you are Stevie Wonder, and your favorite place is Lansing, or your favorite state symbol is the apple blossom, that would make the statement true. Second, if you are Stevie Wonder, and your favorite symbol is an apple blossom, you would signify true. Third, if you are Stevie Wonder, your favorite place is Lansing, and your favorite state symbol is an apple blossom, that would also make the statement true. Fourth and finally, if you are not Stevie Wonder, your statement would automatically be true. In each case, you would show a nickel. The only case you would show a penny for this statement is if you are Stevie Wonder, but neither of the other favorites are true. Players once again check off information on their checklist. Play continues until a player attempts to win. On your turn, to win, guess each player's set of cards out loud, and they will respond with either a penny or nickel to signify if you guessed correctly. For example, player one would say, player two is Stevie Wonder, his favorite place is Lansing, and his favorite state symbol is an apple blossom. Player three is Tim Allen, his favorite place is Sleeping Bear Dunes, and his favorite state symbol is the white-tailed deer. Since both players showed a nickel, player one is the winner. If any player shows a penny, play continues. You continue answering questions for other players, but you cannot win the game. Questions to think about during or after gameplay could be, what statements were most effective in unveiling information about other players? What statements were not helpful? Why not? Why is a statement automatically true if you are not the person in the statement? Which statements were more helpful in determining information about another player, those that turned out to be true, or those that turned out to be false? Feel free to pause the video to reread the questions. A few variations to this game include Your State Madness or Limited Michigan Madness. Feel free to pause the video to read the variations.